Hi guys, school here, and this is another train simulator. Yes, the world is just bereft of train simulators. What we actually need is another one. Well, here we go. This is Train Planet. This is going to release at some point in 2024. We don't know how much it will cost. It may even be free, and the reason I say that is because Train Planet is made by the same people that made Fishing Planet, and Fishing Planet is a free sim, but with paid DLC, and that means this could go the same direction or it may not i don't know anyway train planet builds itself as and i quote the ultimate train sim this is a demo this is available to play on steam for free there are two locomotives included and today we're going to take a look at train planet demo have a look at what's available and maybe discuss whether this could actually be something that knocks dovetail off its perch let's get started now, before we begin, we need to pick a locomotive and a journey. I'm not going to focus too much on this menu here. I'm going to get straight into the driving. But what I will say is there are two locomotives available in the demo. That's the uh, BR186, which is an electric locomotive, and the Deutsche Bahn BR218, which is a diesel hydraulic locomotive. We're going to drive this one today because it's more interesting, quite frankly. The electric is quite simple to drive. This is a little bit more interesting. Now there's journey and scenarios. We're going to go with the scenario and this is where it kind of gets interesting because you need to buy the scenario that you want to drive. Once you bought it, you can then drive it, but you need to buy it with these credits. And in the demo, we have a lot of credits, but it's in interesting what's going on here. We'll talk about this later. I'm going to go for this one. No, sorry, this one, because it has eight cars. It's a medium difficulty, four stop, 31 minutes. We're going to get this done. And uh, we're going to buy that's 10,000 credits. We'll get 3,000 back, hopefully, if we finish it properly. 200 XP and 1,500. I don't know what they are. But let's buy it, and then we'll start and jump into the scenario. Okay, I need to start the engine first, so we're going to hold the P key down. That will start the diesel up. Then at the bottom it says, uh, hold T for left or Y for right doors. We're going to be going out the right side so we're going to press the y key which will open the doors top left it says we need to leave here at 901 the boarding has started it's going to complete quite quickly we'll put the headlights on i haven't really got time to chat at this very second we need to get going we'll cover all the informations on the screen there's quite a lot of information but just pay attention top left it says boarding 18 seconds there are no passengers in the sim at the moment it's in this demo mode none of them okay so boarding is almost done we're going to press the y key which will close the door we'll set the reverser to forward press the n key to release the pzb and then we'll release the locomotive brake now we need to go to thrust position one and we need to wait basically because the diesel hydraulic the weight just works it needs a chance to spool up the hydraulic transmission and then we can gradually increase the thrust we'll go to position five like that and then once we get over 20 k's or so we can pick up the full power um, but basically it's just a gradual process that's all it is if we have a look outside you see what the thing looks like from the outside it's pretty nice let's bring up the power we'll go to power setting 10. and this gives you an idea of what the modeling is like in train planet it's using the unity engine and F mod for the audio. Okay, we're above 20 Ks now, so we're going to pick up the power even more. We're going to go to maximum power. It's using the Unity engine. It's pretty good. It's running at 4K, 60 FPS, but you may notice some flickering textures bottom left. Again, this is a demo. This is not the final product. It's just literally a demo. So we'll just ignore some of the flickery aspects of the game. And uh, we'll just quickly talk about some of the information that's on the screen. So top left, we have just left Duran, 901. It's currently 902. Our first stop is at Langue... Langue... Where? How have we seen <laughs> I don't speak German, okay? 9.2 kilometers. We need to be there at 909. Then we've got some more stops. Last stop is 930 at Aachen. Top middle of the screen shows you... Really interesting, actually, what it shows you. 
We are, from our destination, we're now on the first kilometre. That says number one there. There's, there's numbers across the top there, kilometre blocks, I think, or at least the blocks. Um, they may actually not be kilometres, they may just be blocks. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but you can see the, the green aspect on the signals along the block. You can also see a vertical profile of the line. Uh, so we can see that we're going to face a gradual climb as we get up to block eight. Uh, so it gives you a nice vertical profile. You can predict when you're going to go up and down. Top right shows you the next signal aspect. Uh, currently clear, 800 meters. The speed limit at the moment is 160 kilometers uh, per hour. And in 8.8 .8 kilometers, that will change to a 155. That 155 will be shown on that uh, profile on the top middle there. Now, on the right, we have our current speed, which is 76 kilometers per hour. It also shows you a trending line, and it's got the green up arrow, which means we are accelerating, we're picking up speed. That's actually very useful for when you're driving this thing, because you can adjust your thrust to maintain a constant speed or adjust your brakes when you're going down hill to try and hold a certain speed. Then you have thrust lever, dynamic brake lever, train brake, locomotive brake, and the positions that they're in. Underneath that is your master reservoir, master brake pressure, uh, your brake cylinder pressure, and ER, I think is emergency, I'm not sure. Bottom right, I have absolutely no idea what that is, bottom right. I, I'm still trying to figure it out. It's showing all of our cars. There's some red and green lines, not sure what that is, and there's a number which keeps changing. Again, I'm really not sure what that is. That is all the information you have on the display. At the moment, we can't turn this stuff on and off. Some may find this very cluttered in its display. Some may find this information extremely useful. It would be nice to be able to just press a few keys and just have it come and go so we can, you know, improve our immersion, if you like, and use the actual dials for those that want it. Um, speaking of dials, they are in German. Um, at the moment, uh, at the moment, we've basically got German trains on German tracks. Like, that's it in the demo. Uh, everything is labelled in German, but if you hover over it, it does actually show you, for example, brake pipe pressure there, five bars down here, the main reservoir pressure, 8.4, and then time reservoir pressure, five bars reads zero. Not sure about that. Maybe that's broken. Again, you've got the locomotive brake, you've got the dynamic brake, you've got the train brake, and then you've got a whole bunch of switches. You've got your thrust, your reverser setting, the doors, you can even turn the cab lights on and on, on and off. You can turn the instrumentation lights on and off. Let me just focus on the speed a second. Uh, how far? 5Ks, okay, don't need to worry yet. Uh, we've got a timetable display over here, which makes little sense to me at the moment. Um, and then you've got a bunch of dials, engine coolant, oil temperature, transmission, etc. So it is modeling stuff under the hood. Remember, this game builds itself as the ultimate train sim. So one would assume, under the HUD, it's actually being quite detailed in its modeling. Let's pop outside for a second. Um, we go camera position four, and we'll take a look what's going on down here. So we can kind of see, there you go. You can kind of see that the body moves around on the bogies. The bogies themselves look very solid. They do twist a little bit. But you don't see, for example, the springs going up and down on the bogus themselves. So whether that will be improved, I'm not sure. Sound is a little bit basic down there. Uh, but otherwise, looks pretty good. Uh, the clouds are okay. They're acceptable. I'm running it on maximum setting. Shadow and lighting, not bad. Bit of a low-resolution shadow going on, even though I chose, like I say, the maximum setting. Um, Unity engine does require extra work if you want to make it look superb but you know cab internals excellent i would say they are very good that the dirty the model and textured well really sad that i cannot open any of these windows nor can i move i can't get out of the cab that's where it kind of differs i guess from things like trains in world um 2.4 k's so just need to pay attention to the speed so that's the inside of the cab. What kind of things can you do? Well, it does have PZB. It does have CIFA. I do keep pressing the Z key to reset the CIFA top right there. If I don't, in fact, I won't press it, and you'll see it will nag me in a minute. Uh, PZB is currently set to uh, do an emergency brake if uh, I don't um, if I don't respond. Like if I blast through a red light, it'll emergency brake the uh, the train. There's some anti-skid. There's also some VMAX settings. 
So in theory, you can set the maximum speed. Hang on. Right now, I need to concentrate. I'm going to bring the thrust all the way back down to zero. We're 1.3 k's away, so I need to start getting some braking action going on here. We'll go 26% brake. Now, bottom right, it's showing you, I think, the status of all the cars. So my guess is that that comes in particularly useful when you're boarding and deboarding. Maybe it's showing you the brake positions as well. You can see, like, individual yellow lines appearing. Uh, kind of over-braked. Hang on. It's, it's quite different to the... Um, the BR-186 and it's braking. The BR-186, there's the C for C, so I just press that key to get rid of the C for alert. Um, this thing brakes actually very effectively, whereas the uh, electric BR-186 does require a lot of distance to slow down, if you like. Um, but yeah, so bottom right, um, the green bar on the first car, I'm not really sure what that's showing me. Um, I don't know. If you guys have any information on what's going on down there, please post in the comments because I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, I need to be there at 9.09. I'm already late, which means I am going to lose points, uh, I'm afraid. But, you know, points just going to give you XP. It, it, it does work definitely to train sim world in the way that it calculates uh, XP, the way that it kind of penalizes you as well. Um, but on the whole, it kind of looks like there's a... Do you know what? I've just realized I'm supposed to go through this station. What an idiot. That's me talking and not actually paying attention. Let me speed up. I should have been going here full whack. I'm not supposed to stop here. Okay, so now my thrust has disconnected. So what you need to do is put yourself in thrust position one and then wait for it to connect up through the transmission and then you can start to pick up the speed. If you don't, if you just blast your throttle, nothing happens basically. Uh, yeah, I was not paying attention. This was a pass through and now I need to pick up speed quickly otherwise I will lose time and points when I get to Eschweiler so on the whole when you look out the window <laughs> graphically I would say it looks pretty good like they've done a pretty good mod of job of modeling this I don't know how authentic it is all of the routes appear to be actual routes it even shows you as you can see when we chose the scenario it shows you on the map where you are in Germany and what piece of track you're driving on as to how, how accurate this is i really have no idea if you're german and you've been on any of these lines please tell us if you recognize you know any of the track any of the things that you see and particularly the platforms like how how accurate are they one thing that does slightly annoy me is i don't know if you can see it at the moment but there is where the windscreen wipers wipe away the rain um, you can see like a blurred aspect. You can probably see it there where the track is, right in the middle where that dot is. Can you see that weird blurry effect? It kind of bugs me that. I kind of wanted to be able to turn that off. I don't like having this blurred thing on the screen. Um, at the moment, there's no weather. The game itself will have dynamic daytime and dynamic weather. Uh, interestingly enough, when you spawn in, it does seem to set the time to like early morning and you see it in like a sunrise mode and then it quickly sets the time to daytime. Every scenario I've played is in the day. I've not seen any at night and I've not seen any other weather than this, basically dry uh, with a few fluffy clouds. It would be interesting to see it with rain and bad weather and perhaps snow, but I do not know if that will be in the game. now. In terms of what the trailer for this game promises, it says it has dozens of highly detailed locomotives. Well, that sounds cool. And the trailer even shows you things uh, like the ICE train and various of the locomotives from Germany. Whether they've done any outside of Germany, whether they've done, you know, UK trains, American trains, you know, no idea. I don't know what's on the on the on the uh, palette in that sense. It promises an intuitive UI. Well. At the moment, the UI is um, definitely basic, <laughs> uh, minimal, and yeah, it, it's in need of some polish. So let's hope they manage to do that. It promises hundreds of missions and, tr and tasks. Again, at the moment, the scenarios are very much go here, stop at these places. Timetable is the most difficult aspect, but there are certainly no 
there's no sense of doing specific tasks. There's no, there's like one or two freight missions and they're just hauled from A to B. They're not, you know, make drops, disconnect things, shunt some stuff. There's, I can't see any of that at the moment. So maybe that will change. We'll take a look at one of the other things it promises, locomotive upgrades and modifications. Now, this one confuses me the most and makes me... I have a lot of questions about this. Why are we able to upgrade and modify the locomotives? The only time you would ever want to do that is if you actually buy and own the locomotives in some kind of fleet aspect or maybe career aspect do you know what I'm saying? Like, normally with a train sim, you jump in and off you go. Derail Valley being the exception, um, you do have to get licenses to drive those things. But again, you don't own the locomotive. Like, nobody wants to own a train. It's very expensive. So why do you modify and upgrade a locomotive? I have a big question mark over that. Does that mean some of that stuff's going to be DLC? Do we have to configure our locomotive for a specific task? I don't know. Will we have to get licenses to drive you know, more powerful motor traction engine upgrades? Don't know. Big question, but quite an interesting one. We do have to stop at this stop, and I do need to start slowing down a little bit. Let me concentrate. There we go. It also promises ultra-realistic physics simulation. Now, I think the jury's out on that one. We'll have to wait for the game to actually come out. At the moment, I'm not seeing ultra-realistic physics simulation. I'm seeing good levels of physics simulation in terms of brake pipe pressures outside, you know, the, the way the actual cabin moves and stuff. Is it ultra-realistic? I'm not so sure. Hang on, let's get the... get it on hold. 9% hold, 1.3k out, gradual braking. I am going to get there late, of course, because I wasted a lot of time. Um, I've mentioned the dynamic daytime, dynamic weather. Dozens of realistic tracks, it promises. Dozens of realistic tracks. Again, this just bringing things back to the fact that this is from the makers of Fishing Planet. I think I'm going to perhaps over or under break this. We'll see. Yeah, I'm making a mess of the braking. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to talk and concentrate on driving at the same time. And as you can perhaps tell, it's not working very well. Uh, so don't expect me to do well in this scenario. Because I'm just trying to tell you everything that I've learned and thought about this particular sim at the moment. So I can't really concentrate on what I need to do here. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. So dozens of realistic tracks. From the maker of Fishing Planet... Uh, where well, pretty much everything is a DLC. I think, and I am guessing here, it will go down the same road as Dovetail in the sense that they will release tracks and perhaps locomotives as paid DLC. Half of you are probably saying, oh, God. And the other half are probably going, well, yeah, maybe that's the way it has to be. I mean, new content has to be paid for in some way. Um... And people get really annoyed with Dovetail and their DLC model because there's quite literally thousands and thousands of dollars worth of DLC content for Train Simulator. Um, will this go the same way? Possibly. Is it just going to be Germany this year and then maybe different countries next year? I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see what kind of tracks they bring out. I, I would personally like a release with something more than just Germany. Not that I have anything against driving in Germany. I don't. Uh, but I just want something more. I want some American stuff and some maybe UK stuff. Um, maybe even some French stuff, Swiss stuff. I don't know. We'll see what they come out with. Again, the game has no specific release date. Uh, it's just targeting 2024. And we don't have a price point. And that's the other question. Is how much is this thing going to cost? Or will it just be free? Fishing Planet is free. Right, let's press that. Let's open the doors. We are a little bit late, but not too bad. If they can board quickly, we can get out of here. We're about a minute late at the moment. We have a green aspect in front of us, so we are free to go once they finish boarding. Um, Fishing Planet releases as a free product with paid DLC. This may go the same way. It may release with just a few uh, scenarios and a couple of locomotives, like in its current state, and then say to you, right, off you go. Go and buy the rest if you want to drive something else. 
I don't really have an objection to that. Born and complete. Okay, release the brakes. And we'll engage position one. Wait for the transmission to engage. Position two. Go to position five. Now, there is wheel slip in this. Um, I have experienced it. I experienced it on the electric motor mo locomotive, um, the BR186, when I hauled seven freight cars, which were very, very heavy. And I got, I put too much power in. I started to get wheel slip. I could then press the X key and release sand, which fixed the problem, uh, or just back off on the traction. So it definitely does model wheel slip. I know that. And obviously, it models brake pressure, etc. Let's get some more thrust. Not too much. I need to get over 20Ks, really. In terms of scenarios, and we will take a look at this in a second, there are scenarios and journeys. Uh, they have different difficulty types. This is a medium difficulty, perhaps because of the terrain. You can see on the top middle that there's a very climbing aspect to this particular terrain and a timetable that we need to stick to, and we're currently on plus one minute. So there we go. Let's get full power in now. We can um, I'm not doing ter terribly well, but that's because I'm trying to make a video for you guys. The real question I have is, is this competition for Dovetail Games? Because Dovetail Games has enjoyed over 10 years, I would say, of dominance in the train sim market. It, it, it's just got, like, there are other ones that you can play, like Run 8, Derail Valley, you know, it's even Railroad uh, Online. There's, there's other ones that you can play, and they all offer something else. But in terms of the big daddy the, the the elephant in the room it's undoubtedly dovetail games with train simulator and train simulator world and all the variations it brings out every year the model is the same release um release routes and release uh locomotives perhaps sometimes combine them release them as a dlc you know you you, you buy the main game you get a bunch of stuff and then everything else you just add on to Annoyingly, every time they change major version, you can't necessarily carry forward some of the some of the DLC, and that's where it starts to get a bit ugly. Also, one of the major criticisms of Dovetail from the community is the fact that when they release a DLC, perhaps like a journey, you know, a journey with some scenarios in it, they don't bug fix it. Like they don't they just release it and seemingly walk away. There are just endless comments of people complaining about having bought DLC with bugs that have never been fixed post-release. I do not want to see this game go down the same road. I want to see, if I buy a DLC, I want it to be maintained and bug fixed until it's working as it should. And then fine, if you want to leave it alone, that's fine. At least I got a product that I expected and paid for. But seriously, is this com competition for Dovetail? At the moment, I don't know. Uh, Dovetail uses the Unreal Engine. This uses Unity. Graphically, this looks pretty good. It does look like a OMSI on steroids in some aspects in terms of its graphics. Um, but if they get the lighting right, it can definitely look good enough for a train simulator. Um, underneath, the simulation is what is arguably more important. Let me just pause for a second and just we'll take a look at the level of detail that's in this sim. So you can see they've, you know, they've modeled these, these sidings very, very well. There's a lot of detail here, and at 4K, I have no problems with FPS. When Trendsim World first came out, I struggled in 1080. Um, so they've definitely nailed that aspect of it, and that's just a demo. So I'm quite happy about that. You'll also notice the way that your kind of iris opens up when you look at something dark, and then clamps down when you look at something bright. So they've modeled that as well. I I have mixed feelings about whether I like that or not. That that can be a bit weird. Um, but I see why they've done it. It's probably default in Unity. Train station detail outside, look at that. That is definitely good enough. Remember, most of the time we spend our time just blasting past things. It doesn't have to look amazing, but that looks good. Like all the, all the gantries, all the wiring, the cabling. I have... AI trains turned on, but I've only ever seen one or two. And I also have AI road traffic turned on, but I've never seen any. And I've never seen any passengers get on and off my trains either. So 
Maybe that will take some hit on the FPS when they eventually drop that into the game. But right now, it's certainly good enough. Uh, and it's a free demo. There's a lot of playable content here for a free demo without, without a shadow of a doubt. If it's a competition for Dovetail Games, if it starts to pull people over to it away from Train Simulator, that could get very interesting. I think Dovetail may have competition here. It will obviously take a few years for this thing to build up, to build its library of scenarios and locomotives, you know, and places around the world that you can go. Like, Dovetail has a massive library of this. But it may cause Dovetail to change gear and actually up its game. I don't know whether it will or not, but it may have that effect on them, if nothing else. And that can only be a good thing, because we do need competition, and I think this is aiming itself very squarely at Dovetail Games' monopoly. And that that's going to be interesting. Whenever, whenever two companies fight for your money like this, we win. That's what generally happens, is we win. So it will be interesting to see what happens. We are two kilometers away from Ellendorf, so I do need to pay attention. We have got a bit of a climb, but I'm going to back off because I'm going quite quickly. Trying to get the braking right on this thing is something I'm still trying to master, but I better get some braking going. Let's hold the brakes at 30%. It is a lapped braking type system, so you kind of set your percentage and then hold. I'm getting points for smooth braking top left there. Look at that. It obviously thinks I'm going to stop in time. <laughs> we'll see. I'm just going to hold 10% brake. I feel like I've got the speed under control. And we are... Actually, we're climbing, but then we're going to go through a little dip, if you look at that. So you can see along the ticker tape at the top there, you can see the different um, speed limit changes as well. So there's a 120 limit change, then a 100, then a 60. If you do the freight missions, then you're, d despite what the track, the line speed is, you're limited to 100Ks um, with the freight services. So, yeah, you just, when, when you do the freight which missions, you just keep yourself, I keep it at about 90Ks, and it works pretty well. I arrived on time with my delivery. When I was focusing on what I was doing, guys, and not just talking to you, right, we're 400 meters. Uh, we're doing 50Ks. Let's get a bit more braking going on now. Let's hold it at 30%. Also, control-wise, the controls are very similar to Dovetail Games' Trains in World. In, in, you know, WASD, like even the brake keys, they're all the same. Which I think is a very deliberate thing. I think they've done that so that if you play Trans in World and you come and play this game most of the controls are pretty familiar to you and as they say if it ain't broke don't fix it okay we're already a couple of minutes late okay 30% break and stop press the Y key let's open the doors you can see the doors open um, but nobody actually gets out you don't see anybody inside that's a tricky thing to model uh, and it definitely will take fps when they do model it so i can understand them not putting it in the demo but it does take away from the whole point of doing passenger services <laughs> is when you can't actually see the passengers um but i do want them to do it right i don't like it when you see really bad uh cheesy passengers if you like that just look ridiculous you know, the sort of malformed, mal-shapen, 10 polygon versions. Right, thrust one is in. Brakes are released. We're starting to move. Three minutes late now, so yeah, this is why it's a medium difficulty. Because it's going to get very hard to um, get the points back. Okay, so I've basically discussed pretty much um, everything I wanted to discuss. I, there's, there are many questions that I have. Um, again, I would love to see a train simulator where all the routes across the world are joined up. Like we can just, you know, I can take a long journey all the way from London to Edinburgh. I, I just don't know if they'll ever, if it'll ever happen. 
Um, the way train sim, all these simulators seem to work is they just let you release, let you buy individual scenarios like, you know, Cologne to München or whatever it is. Um, and I think I see that here. I don't see it changing. So you have to buy individual routes and just drive individual routes. And the idea of doing a super long journey across Europe seems just as distant memory to me now as it was back in, in 2010. I just don't think that's going to change. Like in Flight Sim, I can fly anywhere I want in the world. In Train Sim, I have to drive, I have to drive specific routes, you know? It's that kind of thing. Even in Eurotruck, if I buy all the map DLC, I can drive all over Europe. Um, just can't do it in Train Sim. And that's... I'd love to see them tackle that one day. Anyway, so what I want to do now is, is I'll probably just cut now and we'll jump forward to me actually dropping this thing off and we'll see what points I get and uh, how many points I lose. And then I'll show you around the menu system what's available and you can see then there's a hint of what's perhaps to come. So let's have a very quick look at what is available. It's a rudimentary interface, but if you go up to settings here, you can see gameplay. You can turn these different things on and off. I've got all the traffic turned on and hardly saw a thing. In terms of interface, you can turn on and off metric uh, units. You can see I had everything maxed out as best as I could. Audio, simple interface, not much choice there. Input, this is the key mappings. Um, as I say, you will definitely recognize them from Trends in Worlds, so it should be quite easy to transition. It certainly was for me. Account. You can't actually change your name. It won't let you type in here. Uh, I, I guess this is connects to something. Maybe it asks you to create an account with them. And that's how that will work. Then you've got qualifications. So these are interesting. Um, most of this is disabled at the moment, but it does give you an idea of what's to come. So basic, you can go for like, I've done this one, but then it won't let me do that one. Open doesn't do anything. And I click on it. Oh, it does now. It's unlocked. Um, that didn't work before. So I've completed that one, which then unlocked this one. I complete that, it unlocks that. And then these are coming soon. That's for that locomotive. But again, here's the electric. And presumably you'll have this for every locomotive in the game. It will take you through basic like Maybe maybe you'll have to do it in a licensing aspect like Derail Valley. You'll have to prove yourself in these before it will then unlock the ability to drive that train. Maybe this score will be something per locomotive. I don't know. Competence breaking and mastering. I would hope there's some point to this, not just a box ticking exercise. I would hope that it would it would limit your abilities to do things until you've proven yourself, but who knows? So that's qualifications. Then under ride, you've got journey and scenarios. Now, as far as I can tell, journeys are just individual runs from A to B. They do have a difficulty, easy going up to medium and then hard. They are passenger or freight. There's not many freight around at the moment. They tell you the duration of the stops, and then they tell you the makeup of the consist, you know, how many locomotives you've got, how many cars you've got, etc. And then it gives you a timetable breakdown. Again, you have to buy them with credits, but it, you will get some back when you complete it. And then you've got scenarios, and scenarios are kind of broken down by area. So, you know, Köln to Duren, you've got the introduction, and then you've got the routes with varying difficulties. But again, at the moment, these are very, very basic. They're just driving things that I, I would hope that in the future, these scenarios will have a bit like Train Sim World or Train Sim does, where they have different challenges, where there's something has happened, like a broken down loco. There'll be something on the route where you've got to change track. And I, I you know, I am speculating, but otherwise this seems entirely pointless, but that's basically the the whole thing and how it works. They're the options at the moment, but I'm sure when it releases, it will look very different to this. Oh, and there was one thing I didn't show you, service. If you click on service, this is where it gets super weird. Like you can literally spend credits to get brake pads. These, these are used brake pads. Um, resource 475 out of 500. So they obviously wear down as you use them. So you've got to replace the brake pads on the locomotive. Um, designed for 500k of braking, they maintain peak performance after 3k of continuous use, even when heating to redness. Um, why am I buying brake pads for a locomotive I don't own? Question, do I end up buying the locomotive as well? Transmission, again, the transmission's gonna wear down. Is it gonna wear down quicker depending on how you drive it? Are you gonna have to spend credits actually keeping this stuff maintained? Or do you just get 
better engines. I mean, look at this here, right? So this is a diesel engine. You've got this MTU power 2470. Don't know if that's kilowatts or horsepower. No idea. Then you've got this one, which is more powerful than the previous engine, and it's also new. And then you've got this one, which is a monster. So maybe you have to spend credits to buy a more powerful engine so that you can haul something bigger. Cooling, you know, obviously more efficient cooling, diesel oil, resource that it burns through, air compressor, you know, battery. Like, I, seriously, I have so many questions about this. I don't know how this works. I don't know why I'm buying mods and upgrades and servicing locomotives that I never own. But maybe the goal is that we own them. Who knows? Right, we are about to go into a 100 speed limit, 2.3 k's away. There's a 60 speed limit coming up after that, so I need to get my speed under control here. I get some light braking going on just to shave off the speed. On the whole, I would say this sim is performing pretty well. It's performing well in 4K. There aren't many challenges um, at the moment. Uh, other than just signal aspects, but again, it doesn't throw curveballs at you, you know, sudden signal changes. Doesn't do any of that. Okay, let's get the speed back under control. It's giving me a warning about the speed limit change. There we go. I'm happy to cruise in at 50. Um, there are graphical glitches. We've already, you know, we've already seen some some little graphical glitches down here. It is a demo version. I'm not worried about that either. I'm sure they'll get polished. The cameras, annoyingly, sorry, I'm having to concentrate on driving as well. The cameras don't remember the position. So if I press the two key and move like that, and then press the one key and then press the two key again, it just starts there. So I can't. I can't even set any cameras, and that is a bit of a frustration. Let's get a little bit of braking going on. Uh, so again, that's something to be polished on. The, the career mode, I just don't know what it's for at the moment. I don't know which way it's going to go. I can see possibilities, but how it will end up, I really don't know. It's It's interesting. It could be a lot different to the trends in Worldway and a lot more involved. It could be a bit more like Eurotruck. I don't know what the price point is. I don't know uh, if it's going to be free plus DLC or paid for plus DLC. I don't know what's going to be included, when it's going to release. We don't know this yet. There's no way to save and resume either. So you can't, like, if you're in the middle of a long scenario, there's no way to... Um, if you're in the middle of a long scenario, you can't just save it and then come back to it later, uh, which is something that really, you know, it didn't work terribly well in Train Sim World, if I'm perfectly honest, but it's the kind of thing you need if you're doing a super long, uh, you know, like an hour or something journey, or even longer. I think there's a, I think there's a longer journey in the current demo as well than that. Um, and also when you've bought a journey and you do it, it doesn't show you what your previous score was like how well you did which is a bit odd but again this is all stuff i'm sure will get polished up um as we go forward it's a full release i'm sure they'll, they'll tackle all that and all will become clear but i think at the moment um what we have here certainly try it as a demo it's free on steam just give it a whirl you, there's definitely some playable content here okay let's start getting some We need to be within 100 meters. We're within 62. That's absolutely fine. We're late enough as it is. Let's get everybody off. Passengers can get off there. And we have arrived. Again, detail station. Look at that. Just needs people to walk around. So they will now um, deboard. And then it'll give us a breakdown of our score. So there we go. That was the score that we received. 3,000. What's that? So we got penalty of 560 points. Um... Total 1867, the base was 1500, so we got some bonus added onto that. And then we got bonus XP added 50. And then we got bonus, the base was 3000 credits, we got 3750. Uh, it took us 34 minutes, that gets added up here. 
And uh, yeah, but like I say, when you go to the scenario, if I go back to that scenario now, which was, uh, I think, this one, it doesn't show me anywhere what score I finally got, which is a bit weird. Well, that's it for this look at Train Planet demo, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it, found it useful. Let me know in the comments your thoughts, what your hopes are maybe for this sim. Uh, and if you actually think Dovetail has something uh, in the way of a challenge on its hand. That's it from me. Take care, guys. Happy training.